The six modules of Road Safety Data System are Module 1, Data for Road Safety Management Module 2, Collecting Data Module 3, Establishing and Maintaining Data Systems Module 4, Different User Needs Module 5, Data Quality Module 6, Monitoring and Evaluation Dr. Blair Turner is a Principal Research Scientist of the Australian Road Research Board. He is currently leading research at ARRB on road safety engineering issues. Dr. Turner will be presenting the modules for road safety data systems. Module 1 Data for Road Safety Management This module is designed to provide an overview of the importance of road safety data within the broader context of road safety management. This will include examples of what can go wrong if such data isn't collected. An overview will be provided on the types of data that are used in the management and delivery of road safety. Dr. Turner will start Module 1. to the first uh, session for today. So this is about uh, an overview for why we need to collect information for road safety management. This is the Global Manual for Data Systems and I will be referring uh, very heavily to this document. It includes some very good information to help get started or to help improve your current systems as well. This document covers the process uh, and the issues around data systems. Uh, it is available uh, for everyone to download in, in, in your countries and the website is given uh, in your notes. Uh, it is available for free. Uh, it has been translated into a number of different languages uh, and we know uh, English, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian and maybe others data for road safety. Uh, we'll talk about uh, what is useful uh, and why we need to use it. Okay, as I mentioned, we'll be covering issues about the importance of data for road safety, uh, what data we need, why is it needed, and then this uh, very important issue, and the main focus would be on uh, data management strategy. Okay, so the importance of road safety data. I think many of you will understand some of these issues already. We need to know what is going on, what, what our prob problems are, to effectively manage road safety. If we don't know that we have problems with uh, children, then we can't start to plan strategies around children. If we don't know our problems about motorcycles, we can't plan strategies around motorcycles. I think you'll understand this, this basic idea. So road safety data is essential for an evidence-based approach. We can't go and uh, choose to do something because we think it's a good idea. We must know it is a problem and we must know that what we want to do will be an effective solution. So we use data and road safety to help us develop our strategies. Our national road safety strategies must be linked to our problems, and that is based on, on data. It is also what gives us information about what we want to do, our action plans and the projects that will be undertaken. The information is used by many stakeholders, and we'll discuss some of those in a moment. But it helps us identify our key crash types. It will tell us that we have a problem with motorcycles and helmets. It will tell us we have problems with pedestrians walking to school. The time of day is school time so, uh, and the age is for young children. So it tells us our problems. It tells us also the locations of these problems uh, down to the road that these problems uh, are occurring on and that allows us to make changes to the road or allows us to do enforcement or allows us to plan education programs. Through this information and through analysis of this information, we can do uh, detective work. We can be detectives and diagnose the causes. We can do analysis to, to think through what the problems are, what has caused this crash or these crash types, uh, and then help us select the treatments that will be most effective to address these safety problems. And lastly, we can use this information to monitor and evaluate our progress. So over time, are we improving? Is the problem getting worse? Are our children, is the safety for children improving or getting worse? Are our speeding drivers, are their crash problems getting worse or better? And also for our individual programs and projects, we can see if they are effective or not. These projects and programs cost money. We need to make sure that the money is being spent in the best way. If we don't collect information, we won't be able to develop strategy. We won't be able to identify key crash problems. We won't be able to diagnose the causes or select appropriate treatments 
and we won't be able to monitor and evaluate our progress. So this is one of the major building blocks, the base for all of our road safety activities. The data is recognised as part of the uh, global plan for the decade of action. I don't know if this has been mentioned already, but uh, I think you all understand that we have a decade of action for road safety. There is an action plan as part of this uh, decade of action that sets out the activities that should be undertaken at the global level for the whole world to improve uh, road safety over that decade. This is the front cover of that uh, action plan. In here, uh, under Pillar 1, Pillar 1 covers road safety management. And in this pillar, there is some direct advice about the need to collect data for managing road safety. In your notes, I've actually uh, reproduced the information from that strategy, and I'll read this to you now. You can follow in your own notes. But under Pillar 1, it says that for road safety management, we need to encourage the creation of multi sectoral partnerships and designation of lead agencies. This is complicated wording to say that we need to be partnering with uh, all stakeholders to develop and lead the delivery of national road safety strategies, plans and targets. Things can go wrong. We don't know our problems. We don't actually know how effective our spending is. We all have limited budgets. We want to make sure that our money is spent in the best way. We make poor investment decisions and we can actually spend money on activities that may increase risk. So what data is needed and why is it needed? And this is a very important thing to understand. We need to understand what end uses the data will be used for. If we don't understand who will use this information, then we will collect the wrong information. So this is a very important thing to understand. As I mentioned, it's an expensive exercise to collect data. So uh, again, it's important to know that we are investing uh, in the right data when we do collect this information. It's also used to help uh, track against our targets and uh, as part of our strategies. So we will set a target to reduce crashes in our countries by 30% or 50%. We need to monitor our progress towards those targets. And these are some of the sorts of uh, outputs they like to see. Very simple graphs about the change over time and crashes. Easy to understand. This is the year, this is the number of deaths. Crashes increased, crashes decreased. Very basic information for policymakers. Um, often uh, they only have limited amount of time to read documents and understand. Road safety engineers, very important. Uh, it is used by road safety engineers to identify locations that are of high risk. Locations where there's been a high number of crashes. Uh, either at an intersection or a point on the road, for a length of road, uh, or for a whole area. We look at the number of crashes, uh, the crash costs, I'll come back to later, crash rates also. We also look at uh, sometimes locations where crashes have increased unexpectedly. We have uh, reports especially for this, which I'll, I'll talk about more tomorrow. The information is needed to become a de detective at these locations. We need to understand the problems to identify the solutions. And there are a whole range of tools which are used by road engineers. Engineers also use this information to monitor the success of their treatments. If we install a roundabout at an intersection, has this had a benefit? Uh, or has the problem stayed the same or, or gotten worse? So they need to understand the crashes before treatment and crashes after. And so examples, things like this, a uh, simple map. Very, very effective way for us to understand our crash problem types. This map shows crash locations by severity. Red, fatal. Purple, serious. The stars, more minor. And here we can quickly see locations where crashes are starting to happen. Clusters. These are areas that we'd start to perhaps uh, investigate more. If they're all happening at the same location, is there something wrong with this location? I'll explain this process in detail. We can produce lists of crash locations. This information here is row each location. It tells us the number of crashes that have happened. In this case, it's ranked. The highest on this list is the worst location for this whole area. And straight away, it tells us where we need to go to first to find some solutions. We've heard from Ray yesterday about how the police use information. 
and they're after information on uh, different crash types, things like speed. If we're able to collect information about crashes uh, and uh, identify whether speed was an issue, we can see where speed crashes have happened. Same as alcohol, seatbelt wearing, helmets, vehicle defects. Are these all happening in, in common locations? Can we uh, conduct our enforcement at these locations to make a change? Uh, information is uh, used on a whole network basis for the whole country or for a region, and it may identify that speed, for instance, is a major problem, uh, and therefore it gives uh, some uh, information to police that this is part of the strategy. Also, information can come from a location. So if there is a speed crash problem at a certain route, they can conduct enforcement at this location. There are many, many other uses for this information. This one here, uh, this map, shows you child pedestrian crashes in one city. It doesn't show you the crash location, it shows you where these children live. And in this case, the red colour shows where high numbers of uh, crashes happen, where the children actually come from. So what we can do in this city is we can conduct campaigns in schools in these areas. The crashes may have happened over here or even outside this map area. But knowing where children live, we have the address details from our crash data. We can conduct campaigns within schools to, uh, to train children. So that's another use for this sort of information. Some of the other uses that we'll uh, discuss are vehicle designers use this information. They can use information from the hospital system, for instance, to understand what happens when a crash does occur. What was the injury? Was there a chest injury from striking the steering wheel? And they can update the design of their vehicles, and this has led to major improvements in vehicle safety. We don't have that same uh, benefit in motorcycle safety, unfortunately, but the data is there about the problems that happen in motorcycle crashes as well, and it may lead to, to motorcycle improvements. We've already discussed that it can be used for research and evaluation to monitor against targets, but also for after a crash. If we know the locations where crashes occur, we can uh, put in place uh, ambulance services so they can get more quickly to these locations. It can help with a post-crash care solution. So again, it helps us understand where we need to put our resources. Okay, this diagram comes straight from the data systems manual, uh, actually on, on page five, and it describes the public health approach to road safety. And it is a cycle. At the start, we identify our data, we analyze our data, and we find out what our risks are. So starting with data, analysis to identify risks. Think about the solutions, what can we do to fix these problems? And then we set targets and we watch what happens. We collect the data to monitor the effect. Has this worked? Back to the start. Monitor the data. Identify risks. And this continues. This cycle goes on and on forever. This is something we, we do, we need to start doing now and continue forever and ever. It is very complex. We can forget this bottom part. This is all about our road safety uh, activities, our institutions, our organisations who are involved in road safety. These are the things that they do. So we can ignore that. This is the police, this is the road agency, uh, this is our, uh, education providers and others and all of, all of their activities. Each of these organisations develop uh, strategies and interventions to change road safety. It could be the police who do enforcement. It could be the road agency who improve the roads. It could be schools who provide education. And these are interventions, these are our actions that happen. Okay, so that's a simple way to think about it. These are our organisations, these are our actions. Now this is the important part, the top of the triangle. It's probably easier to see from your notes, uh, and in fact if you turn over the page there's a bigger version of this diagram for you to follow. From all of these interventions, from all of these actions that we take, there will be outputs or outcomes or results that we need to assess. So I'll, sh I'll read through this because it is very, very important. At this bottom level of this 
triangle. The outputs relate to our processes and our implementation. So what were our plans? What were our policies, our programs? What were the interventions? So it m might be things like we do more enforcement. That might be our activity. The next one up, the intermediate outcomes. These are the measures that we are trying to change. So the enforcement might be to reduce speeding. That is the output. More activity by police to enforce speeding. Our intermediate outcome would be to measure the speed of motorists. We can do surveys on the side of the road to understand with this intervention, with this increase in enforcement, has the speed decreased? The next level are our final outcomes. And these are what we usually think about first. These are the crashes. It's the total crashes that are happening on our roads. But from our speed enforcement initiative, what about our speed crashes? Have they changed? They're the important ones that we're trying to change. And at the top are the other outcomes. These are the, the costs associated, the medical costs, uh, the costs for uh, reducing congestion when crashes happen, and all these other sorts of costs. So just to go through this again, this is our organisations. These are the activities that our organisations undertake. I'll use the example of the police and speed enforcement. The outputs will be an increase in police enforcement for speed. Our intermediate outcome will be, has speed changed where we are doing this enforcement? Our outcome indicator will be, our speed crashes have decreased. And then at the top, our injuries have decreased, our, our costs have decreased. The reason this diagram is so important is that it links to the overall road safety management process. He will be using this diagram as the basis for his discussions as well. So this diagram links managing road safety to data. This is why it is so important. It is only when we do this middle step here, when we can link the action with these intermediate measures that we can understand that we have been effective in this intervention. It's only when we do monitoring of the speed on the road that we know, yes, this police enforcement is working. And then when we see the crash data, we can know that, yes, this is what has caused that difference. This is very, very important because it guides the sort of information that we need to collect. Yes, we need to collect the crash data. But the important issue here is it also means we need to collect other data as well. We need to collect information about what was the increase in enforcement by police? How many more hours? How many more speed cameras? We need to collect information about what was the change in speed. And we might do that at several locations in an area. Do that uh, at the start, in the middle, at the end, one month later, to continually track what the change has been.